I won't have to worry about the sun, at least. Even in the Underdark, I never saw gloom like this. It's unsettling. Alas, it's the only path to Moonrise Towers. We have to push into the dark. You know, I feel a connection between us. Like we're two souls walking the same path. Every step we walk trails blood. Killing is an instinct for us. I respect you for that. I would keep the murders in our own camp to a minimum. But otherwise, we're very much on the same page. I do what I have to to survive, that's all. We both want to survive. But why merely survive when you can thrive? Just think, how many others are walking around infected with these parasites? Hundreds? Thousands? And they're not just goblin trash. There are powerful people in the Worm's Thrall. Whoever's waiting for us at Moonrise Towers controls it all. But if we can take that control from them, imagine the power we'd wield. And how would we do that, exactly? I mean, I assume there's some device controlling these things, so we find that. Murder some people and, um... Look, I'm not a details person, all right? But turning up and causing chaos has worked for us so far. I'm just saying, there's an opportunity before us. If we can control the tadpoles, we can keep ourselves safe and enjoy a little world domination on the side. <laughs> you can't tell me that doesn't sound fun. I'll consider it. Do. It's not often the universe hands you something like this. We'd be fools to squander it. Of course, this all assumes we live long enough to find this, uh, moonrise. But I'm feeling optimistic. Thoughts are back on the twisted Skeletus and his honeyed words of violence. You called for me, Master? I was just lying here wishing you wouldn't come back. <laughs> My nauseating master! <laughs> Such rudeness is unbecoming of your august station. I come here, for I wish to bring you another powerful tithe. But I cannot grant you this prize quite yet. You must do something divinely unspeakable first. I kill for myself, not because you command me. Oh, you are such a pleasure to serve. Of course you are killing for yourself. From coast to coast, our realm only exists for you to play with after all. You will receive a royal prize for killing this pretty girl. Isabel, the cleric with the sweetest face of the moon. She is too precious to live. I won't let myself touch another innocent. Oh, Master, consider the tiny mishap with the bard you had the last time we met. Hmm? Your unconscious clever mind hungers for extreme violence. Who knows who you might kill next if you do not satisfy your urge. Be true to yourself, Master. Not only does General Ketherick Thorne live again, it seems he is no longer mortal. He has become, in fact, invincible. We met him on the road here, commanding an army of the Absolute intent on destroying Baldur's Gate. I put an arrow through his eye myself. Only to watch him pluck it out like a splinter. He healed right in front of me and chased us into the shadows. 
Things looked hopeless. But experience has taught me that no matter how bleak things look, there's always hope. You are that hope. <laughs> hope is an illusion, one easily shattered. I deal in action. So tell me, what's the plan? Protected by your artifact, you can infiltrate his forces at Moonrise Towers, posing as a true soul. Find out what it is that makes him invincible, so we can strip him of his advantage. Once Gatherick is without his shield, the sword, together we assault his tower and put a final end to this blight. Catherick's days are numbered. I'll make sure of it. Without a cure for your infection, your days are numbered too. Yet you selflessly offer to spend them fighting alongside us. I like you. I promise I will do everything I can to make sure you survive this. Any cure starts with understanding the disease. Whatever magic Gatherick's using to control these tadpoles, it must be at Moonrise. Until then, we keep drinking wine when we meet. So, how do I reach him? The towers are surrounded by shadows. You're not our only secret weapon. Isabel, a faithful cleric of Seluna, and a light in the darkness. She cast the moon shield around the inn. It's the only reason we're still alive. She's upstairs in her chambers. Tell her I sent you, and she'll see you through the shadows safely. I didn't realize I had an audience. The true soul who's going to save us all. I'm Isabel. Pleased to meet you. The urge deep within tingles. This is the one the butler commanded you to kill. You choke down the obscene thoughts, racking your body with a shiver. Um... What do you mean, save you? How do you figure that? We've been waiting, hoping against hope, for someone like you. Free from the Absolute's influence, yet able to walk among cultists. It's almost too good to be true. But I'd be a poor cleric indeed not to avail of a blessing when I see one. Let me guess. Jahira sent you to beg a protection spell of her favorite cleric. The blessing falls uneasily over your tainted body. You can't help but dream. To kill her would destroy all of last light. You yearn for it so deeply. Perfect. It'll make you immune to the lesser effects of the Shadow Curse, which will get you closer to the towers. But there are places it won't help. Places where the curse is darker, stronger. The cultists are able to traverse even the deepest shadows, though. I don't know how. The Harpers are trying to figure it out. Thank you. Now I must take my leave. Good luck. And may the Moon Maiden protect you. While you're busy in the towers, I'll be sure to... Wait. 
Do you hear that? Something's wrong. Hello, Isabel. Marcus, is that you? What's happened to you? I've been blessed. You can be too. Come with me, and you can hear all about it from Ketherick himself. What are you? True soul, my instructions are clear. Take the girl to Ketherick, alive. swims into your mind's eye, its instructions vivid in your mind. Nothing is more important than bringing the girl alive. What's going on? If you have something to say, say it. Marcus is trying to kidnap you, Isabel. We're going to need to fight. Pathetic. The Absolute sees all. Your treachery will be punished. The Absolute? Of course. You can't believe them, Marcus. Ketherick will never give you whatever it is you've been promised. <laughs> he already has. Time to go, Isabel. than her taken alive. There's an illithid parasite in that corpse. You should take a look. Isabel, are you all right? I'm fine. <coughs> Marcus has been with us since the start. They've been tracking us this whole time. And that was no random attack. You were the target, Isabel. They know how important you are. But they don't know about you. Ketherick will strike again. We need you to strike first. Discover the source of his invulnerability. Make him mortal so we can make him bleed. Good luck. We're in more danger than I knew. If something happens to me... Everyone in this inn is dead. Like that. I won't let that happen. Let's hope your cunning is as strong as your optimism. You're the key to all of this. Once I take Catherick's head, you'll be safe again. No mercy. For Catherick will have none on you. End this. Stomach churns around and around. The bile within is unsettled. Each moment brings a new surge. Your companions sleep like blissful lumps of meat. He is so afraid. So, so afraid of everyone. Besides you, who he ought to fear most. You could do so much better, Master. Get away from him. I won't lay so much as a talon on him. I wouldn't rob you of that delight. Your clever mind is penning tragedy as we speak. Your repressed urge yearns to kill. And kill you will. Tonight, the moment you close your eyes, your favorite person will be brutalized. I didn't lay a finger on Isabel. 
I can control myself. It is precisely because you didn't touch her that you are insatiable. Your dark urge will have death, one way or another. Tonight. You like him for more than his looks, but he will never believe that. Why not make him a pretty corpse? <laughs> We are indomitable together. You underestimate us. You are wrong to consider another your equal. It is my duty to ensure you are making the right decisions, Master. There was much uh, disappointment at your reluctance to kill the little Moon Maiden. You could kill this one deliberately. I'm sure it will be considered a great show of goodwill. The tithe could still be yours. I will save him, whatever it takes. I do not doubt you will act with a decorum befitting one of your rank. Good night, sweet master. Your companion rests blissfully, without a fear in the world. As your hand approaches his body, it wavers. It longs to close around his throat. for a cuddle, although you don't look entirely yourself. What's going on that head of yours? Now isn't the time. I need to protect you. All right. Talk quickly then. As you tell your story, fatigue fills your body. Your head swims with the worst headache you've known. I'm going to kill the person I care most about. You. Unless you can stop me. How flattering. And disturbing. You could have talked to me before things got murderously bad, you know. We are technically in this together. It certainly puts the death of dear, sweet Alfira into some perspective. Suddenly you become drowsy. Your vision blurs and floods with yellow bile, and you faint in a dizzy blur. You are not yourself. All control is gone. This thing won't have you. It won't win. Your jaw convulses, and you almost bite off your own tongue. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah! Uh. We ask before we bite. You're cute, you know. In another life, we might have been friends. Your hands are raw and bloody as every inkling of your urge yearns you to tear your bindings. Easy now, darling. You've got this. And I've got you. The maiming twitches consume you. You cannot talk. <sighs> Growl all you want. It won't stop the dawn. This will be over soon. The night 
passes sick and sweating, but bloodlessly. You once again inhabit your own mind. I felt for the bard, seeing you like that. Poor Alfira never stood a chance, did she? Now that you're back with us, we need to have a talk. I don't know where these dark urges are coming from, but I've been trying to resist them. You're not alone in this. None of us are. We can even compare notes if you like. You know, you are allowed to hate me for this. I don't hate you. Because this is not you. But whatever this is, you will get through it. And I'll be here to make sure you do. Anyway, it's a brand new day. I'm sure we'll find lots of people for you to kill. Thank you for not killing me the other night. Are you all right now, or is today a I will wed you with a delicate veil of blood blooming over your white curls kind of day? Uh, joke all you want, but I'm so worried about you. What if I get possessed again? Uh, I'm also worried about me, but I seem to somehow be worried about you more. You give me something to care for, and that's worth the peril. I've been thinking about the runes Kazador carved into my back. I don't know much about Infernal, but I know anything written in Devil Script is going to be bad news. I'm afraid that through those runes, somehow, Kazador might still be able to dominate me. Did he carve runes into any of the other spawn? <laughs> oh, yes. We all got the same treatment. But I can't exactly stroll up and ask to look at their backs, can I? They're still under Cazador's clawed thumb. No. I thought I might ask someone else. Our devilish friend, Raphael. If anyone's going to know about Infernal Text, he will. Oh, sure, that makes sense. I knew you'd see the pragmatic side. Unfortunately, he comes and goes in his own schedule, so we'll just have to look out for any sulfurous odors or the sound of questionable poetry. Meanwhile, I think I'll spend some time studying the art of infernal negotiations. Hello, beautiful. Before we track down Raphael to ask about your scars, what's the plan? It's not a plan yet. More a feeling. Just an itch at the back of my mind. But I know I'm missing something. Whatever Casador did to me, it was more than his usual sadism. It had purpose. Once I know what that purpose was, maybe a plan will present itself. But for now, I just need to scratch this itch. Hmm. Why don't we ask Jahira? Yeah, because she did a great job protecting Ma. Uh, maybe we should ask someone else. Who? No one cares. It's good to see you again. I'd ask if you've made any progress with your little problem. 
But the telltale twitching of your eye is answer enough. Are you following me? You flatter yourself. <laughs> You're not the only soul of interest in this ruin. This is Last Light, where hope hangs on by a single withered thread. I can mend it or cut it, depending on what they ask for. They're not the only ones ripe for temptation, you know. My last contract here fed me for decades. You were here before. Why? Family troubles. Not my family, of course. I never surrender knowledge for free. But one good turn deserves another, does it not? To repay you for the soul sent my way, I offer a taste of the truth. Catherick Thorm, proud father, man of faith, utter fool. On the night the Harpers sealed him away, someone murdered his entire army in cold blood. Now who would possibly benefit from such a massacre? If you want to know more, I could work the exchange of such precious knowledge into the terms of your future deal. But the time for quibbling over clauses and contracts hasn't quite arrived. You'll be limping back to me soon enough. Not with you, at least. Although, I sense there's something your friend wants to ask me. I do. I have a proposal for you. A proposal? If you're hoping to taste my blood, little vampling, think again. <laughs> it burns hotter than wyvern whiskey. This is serious business, devil. My old... Uh, well, a long time ago, someone carved infernal ruins into my back. They are a fragment of a contract. I'd like to know what the full contract says. Mm. Don't play games, Raphael. Help him out. Oh, such impatience. It's something very important to your master. But is it a love letter, a warning, or a deed of ownership? I could give you all the gory details. But of course, you'll have to do something for me first. Let me think about it, and get back to you. Uh, you'll... get back to me? This is important, devil! <sighs> when? Don't worry, I'm motivated to help you. Scars often tell such wonderful stories. I think yours might be truly exquisite. I'll see you soon. Come to kill me again, darling. What? No, I... Oh. Oh, you're kidding. I actually came to tell you you could feed on me tonight if you'd like. Then I'll see your delicious self tonight. Speaking of vampire... things, I wanted to ask about Kazador's spawn. How many others are like you? <laughs> Kazador, Sired Seven Spawn, me and my six brothers and sisters. He always insisted we were a family. Even when he was carving scars into our flesh. I was one of his first. Some of the others came years later. He was a monster to us all. But did take special pleasure in my pain. He said, my screams sounded sweetest. And now that I'm gone, I, I don't know. I pity the other six. The lion stood watch in the blackest of night. Mm. 
Our hero thought but of treasure ahead, did not consider the peace of the dead. Through the dark they went creeping, and awoke what was sleeping. A new grave they dug, which they themselves fed. How long have you been standing around, practicing that little recital? Until it was perfect. I've grown quite fond of you, you know, in my way. I thought it only fair to warn you about the dangers ahead. What dangers are those? Oh, <laughs> we both know they are soon to be revealed. It would be pointless of me to try to bar you from entering. But I can set the scene, as it were. Prepare you for your role. I know my role, even if you don't. It's to kill Kethrick. Ah, I had an inkling that was one of your main motivators. Delighted to see it confirmed. You're welcome to give it your best shot, of course. It's just that, well, the man has proven to be more or less resilient to death, which is not the only obstacle you're likely to face. How do you even know there's danger ahead? My dear friend, I think you'll find I play my part in many a plot indeed. Cannot the same be said for you these days, true soul? Fine. Paint me a picture. There is a stage down in the dark upon which a great drama has suspended itself in time. Its actors dwell there still, mired in the languor of their long, tired scenes. If you, however, through the dark, go creeping and awake what is sleeping, chances are many more graves than yours alone will soon be fed. Paint me a clearer picture than that. Very well. There is a creature that lurks in silence and shadow. A creature who, like me, is very much of the infernal persuasion. Should it make its way out through the very doors you are about to brazenly swing open, you'll have unleashed a pestilence upon this realm. In truth, it is carnage incarnate. So if you meet the devil of which I speak, kill it. Consider no other course of action. You're still only telling me half of what you really know. I can tell. This creature and I go back a long way. I admit it would be in my best interest as well should it remain trapped in the dark. Or misplace its head, perhaps? I should not relish its reacquaintance. Let's leave it at that. Hmm. Fair enough. You have it in you to author a thrilling finale if... If you heed this warning, do not underestimate this opponent. At best, you will have the blink of an eye to strike. Strike first, strike true, defy the odds, for they are distinctly in its favor. That much I owe the bastard to concede. <laughs> and don't think I've forgotten your tale, Astarian. When the beast is dead, I'll consider that payment enough to translate those scars of yours. A fairer deal than I expected. You wound me, Spawn. I always deal fairly. And will close this particular deal soon enough. Vanquish the beast and all will be revealed. Yes, darling? Are you really going to trust that devil to keep his word if we kill this Orthon? I'd trust a devil over a vampire any day. 
I think he likes us. Just stay on your guard. <laughs> Am I not the very definition of careful? What's this? Fresh entertainment. But you're too fresh for this place, aren't you? A dark dweller you may be, but there's a definite whiff of the surface to you. A new arrival, then. You burrow too deep, little rabbit. My apologies. Try as I might, the surface stink just won't wash off. I smell the depths below, that is true. But... There's something else. Almost hidden by your fear stink. Uh, cherries. Musk. Mm. And sulfur. Raphael! I can smell him all over you! Where is he? Bold of you. Stupid, but bold. This temple certainly is grand. Uh, well, it's a rundown bearing the weight of centuries sort of grand, which is my favorite kind, incidentally. The Orthon is dead. Aren't you pleased? <laughs> the Orthon is nothing. I'll have my satisfaction when Raphael makes good on his word. Well, if it helps you, it was a pleasure to kill him. I'm glad you had your fun, then. I am here to provide an endless array of delights. <laughs> Do you know what happens when a devil is struck down on this? charming plane of existence. It returns to the hells, to the very point where it last stood before venturing to whichever devil-forsaken plane it died on. In the case of our friend Yergir, the Orthon you so handily dispatched in the Temple of Shah, he manifested in my House of Hope. He returned to me chastened but intact. His wounds healed, his body restored. He thought I would dismember him. But he has his uses. So instead, I am re-educating him. We delivered the devil. Now I want what I'm owed. We had a deal. Indeed we did. I discovered all there is to know about those scars of yours. It's a rather grim tale, <laughs> even for my tastes. Stop stalling. As you wish. Brace yourself, Astarian. We're about to unveil your destiny. Carved into that ivory skin of yours is one part of an infernal contract between the archdevil Mephistopheles and your former master, Kazador Zar. In full, the contract states that Kazador will be granted knowledge of an infernal ritual so vile it has never been performed. The rite of profane ascension. It promises to be a marvelous ceremony, very elaborate, incredibly ancient, and entirely diabolical. If he completes the rite, he will become a new kind of being, the Vampire Ascendant. All the strengths of his vampiric form will be amplified, 
and alongside them he will enjoy the luxuries of the living. The arousals and appetites of man will return to him, and unlike Astarian, he will have no need of a parasite to protect him from the sun. But the ritual has its price, as all worthwhile things do. Lord Cazador will need to sacrifice a number of souls, including all of his vampiric spawn, if he is to ascend. Imagine how he felt then, when one of those precious spawns simply disappeared into thin air. The only missing ingredient is Astarian. You are the final piece he requires to complete the ritual. Your scars bind you to it. Your soul will set off a very wave of death, bringing Cazador his twisted life. And that, my tragic and toothsome friend, is that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have business elsewhere. <laughs> You're quiet. It's unsettling. It's a lot to take in. What do you think I should do? You'll never be free while Cazador lives. I hate how right you are. I knew he wouldn't leave me alone, even when I was just another wretched toy for him to play with. But if I'm the key to this power he craves, he'll hunt me to the ends of Faerun. <sighs> I need to take the fight to him, and I need you to help me. Of course I'll help. We will hunt him down and kill him. Thank you. <laughs> I did miss that face, you know. Now that we know about it, what do you intend to do about Kazador's ritual? Before anything else, I need to know where it's happening. Uh, to the public, Cazador is an ordinary noble. A little reclusive, perhaps, but just another of the great and the good of Baldur's Gate. He has a grand palace on the hills of the gate, where he hosts the city's high society. I don't know if he performed the ritual there. It feels too public. It risks exposure. We should ask around once in the city. Maybe someone's heard something. I hope so. Because I am not striking another deal with Raphael. Knows what he demand this time. But if the citizens of Baldur's Gate don't know anything, my brothers and sisters might. Cazador is a master of secrets, but the other spawn must have seen something. Do you have a moment? I, I think we need to talk. Are you all right? Oh, yes, I'm fine. I just... feel awful. Look, I had a plan. A nice, simple plan. Seduce you, sleep with you, manipulate your feelings so you'd never turn on me. It was easy. Instinctive. Habits from 200 years of charming people kicked in. All you had to do was fall for it. And all I had to do was not fall for you. Which is where my nice, simple plan fell apart. You're... You're incredible. You deserve something real. I want us to be something real. 
So do I. More than anything. I just don't know what real looks like. Not after 200 years playing the rake. <laughs> Being close to someone, any kind of intimacy, was something I performed to lure people back for him. Even though I know things between us are different, being with someone still feels tainted. Still brings up those feelings of disgust and loathing. I don't know how else to be with someone. No matter how much I'd like to. I care about you. Deeply. Really? Surprises, aren't you? You know, we can be together without sleeping together for as long as you need. <laughs> Why, that uh, almost sounds like a challenge. Honestly, I have no idea what we're doing <laughs> or what comes next. But I know that this, this is nice. Is there something you want to talk about, my dear? Can we talk about the two of us? Can we? <laughs> I suppose we can. So, um, what are we to you? Uh, I don't know. But isn't it nice not to know? <laughs> uh, you're not a victim. Not a target. Not just one night it's better to forget. <laughs> but then... Whatever in the world could you be? Gods, you're beautiful. One more thing. I'm all pointy ears, my love. Could I kiss you? <laughs> Can't get enough. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I do rather like that, you know. That's far enough. His thoughts invade your own, probing for purchase. Your parasite purrs in recognition. My apologies. Welcome back, true soul. What news? I might ask you the same. Why is one of our rank on guard duty? 
Who better to suss out his like? You'll find Zarel in the audience chamber, true soul. She'll be wanting to hear from you. Well then, let's not keep her waiting. Wicked brother took my meat. There is only the absolute. Oh, that's grotesque. Don't stare. You'll only encourage it. Another true soul. The disciple will want to see you through the main doors. We did as we was told, General. Followed every order. The facts suggest otherwise. You were ordered to retrieve the artifact. You failed to do so. Us? No, no, it was Minfara. She got the orders. She... Enough! A blast of mental energy washes over you, filling the room. Your tadpole squirms, urging you to obey. You failed to retrieve the artifact. You failed to protect your true soul. You do not deserve to live. Mercy, General! Please! General Thorne? Let our newest arrival speak. You have seen what these creatures are capable of, and you have seen their inadequacies, isn't that so? What is your judgment? You know I'm loyal! Tell him! Enough! True soul, tell the general how the goblins served our cause. I saw the horrors they committed in the Absolute's name. Thank you! I'm glad someone noticed. I'm sure they were very enthusiastic. But the zeal without efficacy is for children, not servants. We are too close to the ending, and the new beginning. I can coddle failure no longer. Kill them, quickly. What? No! You creaking old bag of shit! <laughs> Sorry, my lord, she's an unbeliever outside my control. Try again. as you see fit. Or better yet, let us take advantage of our surprising guest and their particular creative genius. I'm sure the results will send a clear message to the troops on the importance of discipline. Of course, my lord. Thank you. You heard the general. The goblins are yours. Deal with them however you wish. Here in the seat of the Absolute's power, your authority over them is complete. They will obey any command. Report to me upstairs when you're done. Please! You gotta help me! For old time's sake! I dream of blood pools, deep enough to bathe in. Run me a bath. No! F please! 
please! Done. Nice and neat. Now, let's report to the lovely Zrel. In another lifetime, you were greeted in this throne room like a god. Not the living wreck you are now. Your disgrace has something to do with this Catherick. You yearn to flay him until he forgets himself, as you have. With difficulty, you banish the pooling evil that bewitches your quivering limbs. Perhaps parts of you were scattered in this spire. Time to knit yourself together. The seat of the Absolute's power, occupied by a general that cannot be killed. But his followers are flesh and blood. We must learn more about his power. From this seat, Catherick defied gods and raised an army for the Absolute. It is not particularly comfortable. Oh, gracious one, it is a pleasure to be in your mighty sanctum. Yours is a face I shred in my dreams. One who kicked the steel claw as if I were some stray. I am a champion hunter. When I lick my pelt, I taste blood. Fortunately for you, the slithering vermin I hunt is my attention. For now. What do you mean I kicked you? We've never met. The Deathwalker passed through here before. I know your scent. All were silent before you, but I dared to snarl. You skulked like you owned the place, trespassing on my domain. I will split and burst their every skin. I braved lapping waters and leaking ships to find this prey. I butchered many, and will butcher many more. But this one, this one I toy with. I slice, I tear, and when the time is right, I will bite its head off and bathe in its innards. You know that tadpole is dead, right? Lies, it merely pretends. But I'm a patient hunter. I will wait for it to stir, and then I will strike. Now I must return to my prey. It has been too long since it felt the bite of fear. A moment, true soul. You use a spoon to stir the soup, Barnabas. Forget the axe, my darling. Now, how can I help you? Barnabas? I've shown Barnabas a kinder way. A kinder name is only fitting. That is the gift the Absolute gave me when I stood before her to rewrite the lives of her faithful. Make them believe there's something better. You've actually stood before the Absolute. I have. It is one thing to hear her voice. Quite another to feel the power she can grant. Observe. Barnabas, sweetie, come show what a good boy you are. What would you like him to do? You decide. The prayer, I think. Barnabas struggles with civilized speech, but he's been practicing. You feel her will surge outwards and envelop the creature, inexorable as the tide. <laughs> No, Barnabas! 
We talked about this. Like a rope drawn taut beneath the blade, the connection simply snaps. Now, Barnabas, darling. Now. There's a parasite in that corpse. All trace of restraint is gone. Barnabas has tasted blood, and once more, to your surprise, instead of ravishing you, he grovels with a howl of pining awe. Lord! Ah! Many, many die! I'm back. Why have we met? Raj Oblodra, trader in blood and the sanguineous arts. It is a pleasure to stand before a true soul and your pale companion. I'd like to offer my services, if you're willing. Hmm. What does a trader in blood do exactly? I trade in blood and the potions that can be wrung from it. I'm more than happy to make you one. If you'd honor me with your blood. With one drop, I can brew a rather potent potion for you. The rest, I keep for myself. What kind of potion is this? No idea. But it will be unique to you. Your blood essence and the Absolute's blessing intertwined. We can learn exactly what that means together, hmm? And what exactly will you do with the blood you keep? Research, naturally. A little experimentation, perhaps. I have an innate curiosity for all things sanguine. Sounds interesting. Let's do it. Just a little prick and it's all over. Close your eyes. There we are. All of your very best traits in a bottle. Use it well. Although perhaps there's one more thing we could discuss. Your friend. He's a vampire, no? Or one of their spawn, at least. Oh, don't worry. We're all friends under the absolute. I won't bite. Oh, I'd prefer if you did. I assume he belongs to you? Excuse me? He's his own person. I'm sure he really believes that. How utterly adorable. Do you have a name, Spawn? Uh, Astarian, but, but hold on. Good. Now, Astarian. I've dreamt of being bitten by a vampire since I was a young girl. Uh, I'm sorry, you want to be bitten? To feel your life's blood slipping away. To dance on the edge between life and death. Yes, I want it. I'll even compensate you. A potion of legendary power that forever increases the strength of the one who consumes it. It's not for sale, but it's yours if you bite me. I will have to decline. <laughs> Excuse me? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, and you're squandering it. I gave you my answer. Oh, can't you talk some sense into your obstinate charge? He said no. There's nothing more to discuss. How very disappointing. Is there something you want to talk about, my dear? Can we talk about the two of us? Us? I still love the sound of that. Actually, this was just an excuse for a kiss. <laughs> there is nothing I'd like more. You are 
perfect every time. <laughs> now that would be a prize sample. Don't kill her. Don't kill her. Don't kill her. Don't kill her. Through a narrow crack in the wall, you hear something shift against stone. The pulse of a crawling, living thing. a glimpse, but you recognize this feeling. The same alien presence you felt on the Nautiloid. Your awareness unfolds, expanding through every wall in the tower, every mind. A vast living network extending down into the dark. Where something wakes. What in the hells? Oh no, not again. It's a trap. Tendrils snap like iron cords around your wrist. That presence in your mind looms large, closer now. With a soft sucking sound, your hand pulls free. The flesh within the wall retreats. Oh, thank goodness. I was worried I'd have to get involved. Now, let's keep our hands to ourselves, hmm? The tentacle pulses within the wall. Waiting. There is no hesitation this time. The tendrils lash out like a waiting predator. The tendrils tighten, and suddenly you are elsewhere. The presence is no longer approaching you, but encircling you. Observing you. struggles to compress its vast being down into terms you can understand. This is the voice they have given me. To better speak to your kind without breaking you. I was once a servant of the grand design. Now I'm a slave to theirs. But you... You were the jeweled hope for their design. But now... You are their flaw. Who are they? You abandoned me. You left me the slave of the puny chosen, used to bind this world. But I cannot bind you. You must come to me so I can become myself again. A world away, the grip on you tightens. A desperate, drowning thing that pulls you down with it. What's happening? Speak to me! Wake up!
Thank goodness. I was almost worried. Clingy little shit, this absolute. And she wants to meet. Careful. It nearly had you. Whatever that creature was, its telepathic force was unlike anything I've ever encountered. It must be the source of the absolute. Lashes. Balthazar let one of his walking carcasses lapse from his control. Let's ferry them back. Wait! By the poor lord. It's you! I thought I'd never see you again. I wanted to keep you for myself. But they shipped you away. Keep me? What did you do to me? You talk! And you are aware. How is that possible? Oh, but what an arresting voice you have. You're not supposed to be here, special one. That's not right. But I don't want to damage you. You were my very first, after all. I learned everything about the parasites from you. I remember finding you close to death. Beaten black and blue on the floor of this sanctum. It must have been a few hours after the tadpole was placed in your skull. How you got here was a total mystery. But I stitched you up just enough to keep you alive, then placed you within your crib. I kept you as mine, until you were needed by our superiors. We had such a close bond. I opened you up endlessly with my scalpels and got lost in your insides. You will die for what you did to me. I was not behind it. I do not know. But whoever did it, I'm so glad they left you here for me. Bone Lord, you're the perfect being. All that is unnecessary stripped away. Primal. Innocent. Pure. Truthfully, I'm not surprised to see you found your way back here all by yourself. I always knew you were clever. It has never been the same with another. All the other victims who come here just meekly obey. You thrashed. You fought. You were indomitable. But as special as you are, you shouldn't be swanning around here, acting as if free will is yours again. We're going to kill you, sweet one. But I promise I will stay with you afterwards. Lashes, bring this one back to my table. And prepare my knives for a long night of experiments. But the hack dog said who half pieced you together after whatever caused your head to get in this mess. Someone else must have attacked you in the midst of whatever you were doing down here. This necromancer was a grunt in the scheme of the horrors enacted against you. That attacker is the source. In the heart of all these membranes, there was a dagger awaiting you all along. But from who? Pod has a different air to its chitinous cavern. Dust and dirt are gathered on the inside. It's broken beyond repair, seemingly by a blunt impact, as if whoever was inside threw themselves against it in an effort to break out. Your brain hurls an image towards you, your own head, blood gushing down in front of your eyes. Humor me, Astarian. Can you give this blood a smell? Oh yes, that's yours all right. Even stale, I'd recognize that bouquet anywhere. Hmm. Banging your 
fists on a chamber until half your fingers were broken. How long inside? Days? Months? Lifetimes? The parasite was inserted into your head and your body crammed into a pod long before you were moved to the nautiloid. A laughing woman, taunting you. She betrayed you. Who was she? We leave the heart of the Absolute alive, thanks to you. You did well to defeat Ketherick, but Ketherick was only the first to fall. There are many more battles ahead, and they will not be so easily won. You will need allies. I'm worried what I might do to my allies. Whatever you might do to one, cannot be worse than what the Chosen will unleash on all. And you are the one who could prevent it. Is there something you want to talk about, my dear? Now that we're heading towards the gate, I wanted to ask you about Kazador's ritual. You must be thinking about it. The thing that will decide my fate forevermore. Yes, it's been on my mind. Why? Don't get sassy. I just want to know what your intentions are, how you're feeling. I hadn't really decided on the specifics. Obviously, we could stop the ritual, or... not. What? <laughs> I've obviously thought about it. If I was the one who completed the ritual, I'd have such power. And I could walk in the sun without fear I'd turn into a mind flare. And what of the souls that need to be sacrificed? I don't relish it. But my siblings lured thousands of people to their deaths over the years. I doubt Boulder's Gate would miss them. Of course, I don't even know if I could complete the ritual. It may be impossible, but it certainly is tempting. The curse has been lifted. The lands cleansed of the shadows. Catherick's reign of living death is over. Your courage has been tested, and in this, at least, you have triumphed. Sergeant, if you are here, I presume Worm's Rock is secure, and preparations for my inauguration are complete. No, Lord Gortash. We were interrupted. Another quake in the lower city. More severe this time. So you came cowering to my chambers? I'm flattered, Sergeant. But even I cannot command natural phenomena to cease. Forgive me, my lord, but there is panic in the streets. The people are afraid. Perhaps the people would be calm if you kept your nerve. I expect better from the Flaming Fist than to run scared from a slight tremor in the earth. Get back to your duties. Duties, duties, duties. Patrolling and saluting and following and bowing and scraping. Yes, sir. No, sir. Rip and cut your throat, sir. Your plan is falling apart, Lordling. Give me a reason not to cut you to ribbons. 
control yourself, Orin. We need to focus on reuniting the stones or the brain will break free. These quakes are just the start. Neither of us expected the prison bearers to kill Ketherick. They'll be traveling to the city. Let's make sure we give them a Baldurian welcome. My prodigal bloodkin is among them. They live? <laughs> Barely. I made mince of their ugly mind matter. And if they dare return, I will strip out their awful. Beyond the campsite, the city waits in uneasy silence, one sleep away.